Hi, it's Matt. Uh, just want to talk today about what you should be doing about setting up your call center campaigns and working with call centers. The first thing I would say is you really want to set up an interview like this um, where you're actually talking to the person via camera. There, the main reason for this is there's a lot of fake people in the network. In the network, um, they'll, they'll say they have a call center when they're actually just a broker. And as soon as they've got off the phone or off the text with you, what they do is they shove it on the elance for the lowest bid possible. You don't want that crap. And to be honest, it doesn't do you any favors. It doesn't do the call center industry any favors. It just lowers the quality. But what you have is you, if you have a video chat with me, um, you could actually have a wander around the building if, if you needed to. Um, at the same time, we do have videos on YouTube that actually show the building as it went through its construction phases. There is no big secrets here. But you will find that online, a lot of people are faking nationalities, faking their location, faking their businesses. Nothing exists. And these are the people that are causing a big problem for me, but also for you, because they're the same people that spam you every day. But for me, what I want is for people like yourself with your business to actually liaise with people like myself and other call centers like myself, where you're actually taking the initiative to work directly. And you've got to remember here, you don't have to have um, the problems that you're getting with your brokers that you're dealing with right now. Because you've got to understand, I own this call center. This is a, a business that we own and develop here. What we have is a company that we want to expand. And we only expand with good customers. A broker works all day emailing and sending out messages and calling people to get fresh business nonstop because they know that their campaigns are going to be bad. Because they push the price down. Um, because say you pay $100 for a lead, they'll sell it at like $30. They'll keep $70 for themselves for doing absolutely zero. In the same way you pay... Um, a seat amount uh, for a week or a month or whatever, they would take about 60, 70% of that money and pocket it for themselves if they can. What that means for, for you is you end up with home based centers rather than call centers because call centers simply just laugh and walk away. At the same time, it doesn't do the call centers any favors because they want your business, but there's this miss where you're dealing with a broker up here and the call center's here, so there's this, you know, you're not in contact with each other. But this is why doing things like these YouTube videos I've sat do, sat, started doing is to try and bridge some of that gap where you actually talk to people direct. And what you'll find is you'll get better results, better agents, but also you can actually ask to hear some of the agents. Now, I wouldn't say like, Oh, Matt's here now. Matt, can I hear five agents? No, you can't. There's a reason for that. My agents are don't wouldn't start for another three hours because the, a lot of the work is done in California now, so it's like 1 a.m. before they start dialing. And my day shift, which are on transcription at the moment, have already gone home because it's over. It's past 10 o'clock already. So the answer is no. You should ask for that before we had this conversation. Or even better, just ask if I can send you some recordings, um, even if the guys have to hold a little newspaper article to say with today's date on it. I, I don't mind. I know how rogue this, uh, this business can be sometimes. And let's face it, if you're, if you're a business, it's your, it's your baby. You want to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. And having poor quality call centers work with you actually causes a lot of damage um, on lead generation because your name becomes mud. If, if you're calling somebody 20 times a day because your broker gave it to 20 call centers. Or it could be um, customer service with poor English and poor understanding of what your product is and what they need to be doing. All that sort of stuff I really hate even as a, you know, primarily as a customer, not only as a call center owner, but as a customer. 
you know, it, it's one of the big frustrations is dealing with people that really shouldn't have the work in the first place. If, you, if they're incapable, then why do they get the work? And the answer is because the brokers have pushed the price down. So, where, where, where do you benefit from using a broker? For me, I can't see any value in it at all. Um, because I've seen how they work and they're not actually producing anything of value. Where you would get value is actually uh, dealing with call centers and working out your product knowledge and how you want your sales done, how you want your marketing done, how you want your customer service done, how your um, customer service interface works because a good customer interface should actually have like flow diagrams or things like that where it simplifies a lot of the tasks. Because if you're going through a process, it's much easier to um, get to the, the right solution. But also, it, it, once the agents are experienced on that, they can jump a few stages if it's, you know, if it's pretty obvious stuff. But all that gets developed between customer and client, not customer, brokers, uh, contact center, or uh, sales center. It's got to be direct with the customer. And that's why we work like this. We're, we're simply removing the brokers from our system. Um, we actually downsized just to get rid of the brokers because I don't want to work with them and I don't want to encourage them. But what I do encourage is actually direct working with people like myself and other call centers which have the same sort of initiative and Keen is to develop business rather than this constant rolling of companies where you hire a call center this week, not happy with them, lost money, hire a different call center next week. I know how it rolls. I've seen it working. I've seen how these people will do it on Craigslist. And you know, the other thing is, the joke being is you might actually have been dealing with the same call center multiple times because they use multiple emails, they use fake identities, they use fake. Uh, nationalities and even fake companies. You know, it's they're just bad people. I'm not going to sit here whittling and complaining about it, but I'm just trying to get the point across that they create a lot of damage for your business as well as mine. Because for me, I I work in facilities management management as my uh, background. I've worked in it for 20 years, but the thing with that was. Well, it still is because uh, I might be off to the UK shortly to um, deal with some projects there on some short-term contracts. Uh, same time, I'm looking at moving some of my call center work into asset management and facilities management, which is the main reason I'm in the UK uh, to help build up the portfolio, um, which is very difficult to do remotely for the obvious reasons of the. The, the spam emails and 20, 25 phone calls a day that customers, we, uh, sorry, clients receive from people that are just trying to push their services even if they don't have any. Um, I'm more of an educated person, more face to face, and generally trying to extend my network that already exists rather than pushing my face in front of people all day long. Um, but. The whole point with that is the facilities management and the asset management is based on a structure. It's not based on hassling people nonstop in the hope that the 50 spam emails you send, they might actually read one. It's all based on a system that has etiquette, standards, quality. And primarily the work I've done for my career has been based on, same with my promotions within the companies, is being based on quality. And right now I see the call center needs to have an injection of quality. It's, it's sort of lost its way when it was heavily outsourced. People seem to have got paid far too much and are now um, looking to scramble to take some of the business for themselves regardless of what's going to happen with it. Let's say what, what happens with it. I mean, 
they'll put a bit of investment in, risk all your money, and at worst, they'll lose the contract but still have money in their pocket. I really hate that. And for me, the business should be about uh, partnerships and development. Partnerships being between call center and client, and development being developing sales and adding on other services such as virtual assistants, data administration, uh, data entry, invoicing, uh, inbound customer service, you name it. it you know, it's, it becomes a one-stop shop. That's what I aim for, you know, because in a business in the UK, a small business, you have like one, five, one to five people that are doing like 10 different tasks. And I can't see why people outs outsourced can't do exactly the same if they have the right training and the right guidance. But at the same time, I'm seeing a lot of the simple tasks. I mean, lead generation is a fairly simple uh, job. It just needs to be um, focused. But you're finding so much poor quality in the market because there's so many people just trying to do it on the shoestring and make as much money as possible. I'm not interested in doing that. Uh, anyway, that's enough whittling on for today. Uh, thanks for listening. It's Matt from BPO24Hour.com. Thank you.